Today, we're gonna to be making a watermelon hydromel. This is a mead that I think is gonna be perfect for summertime. Let's get started. So today's recipe is pretty simple. I am using, this is for a three gallon batch, I'm using water up to three gallons, then I will be using about 1.2 to 1.3 pounds of honey. In as far as flavoring is concerned, we are gonna be using this Amoretti watermelon flavoring because using real watermelon is tricky and it's pretty finicky. This is an easier alternative to get watermelon flavoring. And our yeast will be the Sundew Ale Yeast from uh, Omega Yeast. Now, this is a reused, I washed the, or rinsed the yeast, I should say, from a different brew. It's still viable, it'll work well for this project. In the secondary kind of aging side, we might add some things to adjust um, the mouthfeel and such, like possibly some acid blend of some sort, malic acid or something in that regard, a body filler like wine tannin or maltodextrin, I haven't decided yet. And then we are gonna end up using priming sugar to bottle carbonate and quite possibly use erythritol, which is a plant-based sugar that will back sweeten safely without causing re-fermentation. You can do this in a kegging way, but I don't have a kegging operation, so I am doing this in a bottle carbonation way. What is a hydromel? A hydromel is a mead that is 7.5% ABV or lower, so a honey alcohol, 7.5% or lower. Now our, um, I don't think I mentioned it in the recipe, but the honey we are gonna be using is this blackberry, let me get the front of it, uh, blackberry honey. Now I'm using this because it has fruity notes in its own right, and I think it will help pronounce and build up the character, the watermelon character that we want. Let me go ahead and mix in my honey into this and get the starting gravity up to somewhere around 1.040. That's kind of our range we wanna be in. I should also say, make sure you sanitize everything. This is my star sand water, so everything I'm used, I am using today has been sanitized. Okay, I've mixed in all of my ingredients. In total, I used 5.3 ounces of this watermelon flavoring. This eight ounce container is gen generally graded for five gallons, so that's about appropriate. We are currently a little bit above what I said. We're at 1.043 gravity. That is okay. We're still within the hydromel range. Now we're gonna add our yeast. Do you have to use the Sundew Ale yeast from uh, Omega, White, or Omega Yeast Labs? No, you could use any yeast you want. In fact, here's some other recommendations of yeasts I would recommend for this. This is an ale yeast. Here are the stats on it as well. Um, basically, you just want to find a yeast that will not chew too quickly through your gravity, but also will chew through <laughs> your, your gravity. So we're going to go and add it. Again, it's been, uh, it's been rinsed from a previous brew, so it should still be just fine. And let me make sure and get all of it out. Okay, this is done. I'm gonna stick my lid on this bucket and then my airlock. You could do this in a glass carboy if you wanted to and downscale or upscale the recipe. This should start fermenting here in about 24 to 48 hours, at which point we are going to um, let it go and then come back after the primary and make our adjustments. So let's come back after the primary. All right, we're about a week and a half in and it has been fermenting just fine. You can see that it's actually slowing down a little bit because I think it's close to being done fermenting. All right, we're back after the primary. This is done fermenting. It's at 1.004, but it's been sitting here for a while. It was in this bucket. I went ahead and moved it out and I purposefully, um, well, I saw it clear up. I purposefully also got some of the yeasty side because we're gonna bottle carb this thing. Now, let's go ahead and get a taste test post-primary and then talk about it. So the watermelon flavor's semi there. The five ounces we used probably could be up to about eight to really give us more watermelon flavor. Unfortunately, I don't have more of it. Um, if I did, I'd probably add three ounces currently. However, it's definitely there. It's the watermelon flavor minus the sugar, which is part of the watermelon flavor. So we need to add that back in yeah, it just needs a little help balancing. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, it, I think we are gonna contrast the, or we're gonna add to the watermelon flavor by 
adding some erythritol. Erythritol is a plant-based um, non-fermentable sugar. So the yeast will not be able to eat it, which is good. Uh, so this is gonna add the sweetness. I am going to do a little bit of acid blend adjustment with lemon juice because rather than add um, some acid blend or specifically malic acid or citric acid, I wanna just use this. I know this is citric acid. I think it'll be good for this product. This is gonna be carbonated. So I'm not gonna add anything to build up body. I was thinking about adding some wine tannin, some powdered wine tannin, but I think that the carbonation that we get from bottle carving this will be even better. So. Step one, let's add enough erythritol to get this to the sweetness level that we desire. All right, so I've added in total um, one and a half cups of erythritol, one ounce of uh, lemon juice, and that's it. This is currently at 1.012 gravity, so we've added 0.008. It's definitely got more of that sweetness. It's not like a poking super bright watermelon flavor, which is a little bit of a shame, but I do think that could be contrasted if you make this by putting more watermelon flavor in the primary. Of course, you lose some due to the fermentation process. So the, the uh, lemon juice really does kind of help add some complexity, some acidity in there, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think this is gonna be very refreshing. It does need to be, honestly, quite honestly, more watermelony flavor flavored. My problem is I don't have any more of the watermelon flavoring and I could go off and order some more, but I don't really wanna do that. I kinda of wanna leave this as is and let it be just summary 60% watermelony, 40% uh, citrusy kind of-ness. So here's what we're gonna do. We're now gonna use honey as our priming sugar. I've already done the calculations for this um, and I have 3.1 gallons of mead here and I need, in order to use honey as their priming sugar, 2.95 ounces of honey to be the priming sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some mead into here, mix in 2.95 ounces of honey. Um, that's the same is a conversion chart. I'll put it down below. Anyways, I'm gonna mix in our priming sugar so that we can bottle carbonate these. You can do this by kegging, which would be stabilizing and then back sweetening, but we're not doing that. All right, mixed in my priming sugar. Now I have all of these bottles, of course, sanitized. We're gonna go and fill up every single bottle, so I'll be right back. All right, so got all my bottles back behind me. They are bottled, of course. This is gonna bottle carbonate, meaning that the yeast are gonna wake up again, eat the sugars that I gave it, the fermentable sugars, I should specify, and then create carbonation. This will take two to three weeks, roughly, so we'll come back when we do that. I do have a label for these. I'll show it in the screen right now. It's what I normally put on to help me differentiate between the different things that I make. So um, yeah, we'll be back in about two or three weeks to figure out how this tastes. All right, and here we are for the tasting. It's been a couple weeks since we bottled this. Of course, it should be carbonated. Let's find out. Ooh, got some carbonation. Nice. It's always, using honey can be sketchy if you use it wrong as a priming sugar. So, let's go and pour it. This thing looks nice. Pretty clear. It's got a nice, I mean, it's still obviously carbonated. It's got some, some things happening there. Let's smell it. Ooh, very crisp, very light, um, but delicate. This is the immediate flavor I got. The watermelon is pretty delicate, not super strong, but the honey character is there, which is nice. Let's taste it. Oh yeah, that's got, ooh, that's got like this warmth from the honey character, the honey itself at the floral side, but it's got bright notes also from the uh, floral. It has some bite from acidity and that watermelon flavoring is uh, light, but it's still like refreshing. The acidity from that lemon juice we added is actually really nice as well. Ooh, and the carbonation. This is very refreshing. I think it, uh, it's easily smashable. You could have a bunch of these and be totally fine. Oh yeah. No, my only thing, I do. I like the sweetness level for one. I would probably want it to be a little more watermelon-esque and I explained that earlier. Like I said, I'd probably start with more of that watermelon flavoring, but I didn't and that's my only change I think I would do to this. It has a good blend of uh, acid and tannic value. Tannic really only coming from, or mouthfeel coming from the carbonation. Sweetness is nice, um, honey characters there, and a little bit of the watermelon flavor. Could use more. Could you use real watermelon 
as your watermelon hydromel recipe. Absolutely. And I encourage you to try it, but you have to be careful with how you use it. And you have to use a lot of watermelon water, basically juice, to get it to be completely watermelon flavored. I mean, all watermelon is is water that is flavored, has like watermelon flavoring, which sounds silly. But you gotta use a lot of it. It's kind of tricky to use. This is just a shortcut to do it. Ooh. This is very nice, very refreshing. Of course, the recipes are here if you'd like to make it yourself. I've enjoyed getting to do this. I have a bunch more hydromels coming out very soon. So if you'd like to make this or many other different hydromels, make sure to check those out. Um, I, of course, will be posting those recipes and I'm excited for that. I hope you've enjoyed this one. This has been a lot of fun. Go make it yourself. Maybe change a variable if you'd like to. And yeah, so I'll see you next time. Cheers.